Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through evaluation of a clustering algorithms. So basically, I am not clear with this concept guys. So whenever I am searching online or in textbook, I am getting these points only. There is no explanation or anything. So that is the reason why I did not got a clear idea on this guys. So I'll be just going through the theoretical concept and I'll be explaining in my own words. That's it guys. Okay. So if you want a detailed explanation, please search for some other video guys. Sorry for that. Okay. Yes. So let us start. Okay. So evaluating clustering algorithms okay so basically the first question that comes to your mind is what is this clustering and all those things right if you are new for this topic right yes so as we know that clustering is a collection of homogeneous data objects within the same cluster so in that cluster they are homogeneous when compared with other cluster there are heterogeneous so that's what is written here homogeneous to the objects in other cluster and also clustering is a technique of combining a group of physical objects into a class of homogeneous objects okay so you will be dividing it into classes of homogeneous objects okay so the first method is nothing but accessing a cluster tendency guys okay so in this for a given data set we assess whether a non-random structure exists in the data or not so basically whenever we get a data whenever you make into a cluster is there any relation between those shapes or symbols or anything so that is what we'll be evaluating here guys so that is one I, one type of way and the second is nothing but determining the number of clusters in the data set so basically in the question itself they will be saying right so three clusters in k-mean or k-midoid they will be saying the number of clusters which they are expecting right yes so that is also really important because if the number of clusters are more and if there are more there are very less number of n guys so n is only five and you are saying clusters are also five so indirectly each and everyone is getting one so in this way you can evaluate right so based on n and c the number of clusters right yes okay similarly measuring the cluster quality okay so after paying cluster methods applying cluster cluster methods on a data set measuring the quality of a result how good they are or not okay so that we will be doing evaluation that's, uh, that's nothing but two way of evaluation we can do the first way is nothing but extrinsic and the second way is nothing but intrinsic so in extrinsic we will be help this method will help the other problems to be solved whereas intrinsic it will help itself to be solved guys okay so in extrinsic respective okay assume they are different guys it's not difference okay yes so in extrinsic represent image with the clusters future so what are the futures will be representing them training with the different classifiers for each sub problem so basically whenever there is any kind of a problem or population we'll be using some different different sub classifiers guys so that you will be ending up with the same result with all the times okay so identifying and eliminating the outliers and occurrences is possible here okay similarly in intrinsic it is useful in and of itself so basically it can be used in in itself also right it helps understanding the makeup of the data so basically how the data is stored how the data is represented and all those things can be identified similarly cluster coordinate to the class that is nothing but digits to 10 clusters like that you can map one to another okay yes so this is all about evaluation of clusters guys so i hope everyone got some basic idea right i i do agree that i did not explain this in depth sorry for that okay so in the next lecture we'll be going through the review of this unit guys like what are the important topics after that we'll be starting the fifth unit guys okay yes so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching